Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer with the Church of the Atonement in the Edgewater neighborhood of Chicago. Today is Saturday in the fourth week of Lent. We have no commemorations today, so I'll give you the page numbers of the Psalms. Today's Psalms are page, um, our Psalm 79, 80, and 81. And just a second, I guess I won't give you them unless I check, which I failed to do. Psalm 79 begins on page 701. All right, 701 for the Psalms, the regular canticles for today, 12 and 19. And we will finish with a general thanksgiving. Um, my candle is lit is our, is, as our practice here. Candle along with a few daffodils back there this morning. Um, an early spring. So we'll have, we'll pause for a moment of silence to gather ourselves and we will begin our prayers. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Psalm 79, beginning on page 701 of the prayer book. O oh God, the heathen have come into your inheritance. They have profaned your holy temple. They have made Jerusalem a heap of rubble. They have given the bodies of your servants as food for the birds of the air and the flesh of your faithful ones to the beasts of the field. They have shed their blood like water on every side of Jerusalem. And there was no one to bury them. We have become a reproach to our neighbors, an object of scorn and derision to those around us. How long will you be angry, O Lord? Will your fury blaze like fire forever? Pour out your wrath upon the heathen who have not known you, and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon your name, for they have devoured Jacob and made his dwelling a ruin. Remember not our past sins. Let your compassion be swift to meet us, for we have been brought very low. Help us, O God, our Savior, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive us our sins for your name's sake. Why should the heathen say, where is their God? Let it be known among the heathen and in our sight that you avenge the shedding of your servant's blood. Let the sorrowful sighing of the prisoners come before you. And by your great might spare those who are condemned to die. May the revilings with which they reviled you, O Lord, return sevenfold into their bosoms. For we are your people and the sheep of your pasture. We will give you thanks forever and show forth your praise from age to age. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. 
in the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them the bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. You stretched out its tendrils to the sea and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its wall so that all who pass by pluck off its grapes? The wild boar, the forest has ravaged it. And the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down from heaven, behold, and tend this vine. Preserve what your right hand has planted. They burn it with fire like rubbish. At the rebuke of your countenance, let them perish. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Sing with joy to God our strength and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. Raise a song and sound the timbrel, the merry harp and the lyre. Blow the ram's horn at the new moon and at the full moon, the day of your feast. For this is a statute for Israel, a law of the God of Jacob. He laid it as a solemn charge upon Joseph when he came out of the land of Egypt. I heard an unfamiliar voice saying, I eased his shoulder from the burden. His hands were set free from bearing the load. You called on me in trouble and I saved you. I answered you from the secret place of thunder and tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O my people, and I will admonish you. O Israel, if you would but listen to me, there shall be no strange God among you. You shall not worship a foreign God. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and said, Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. And yet my people did not hear my voice. And Israel would not obey me. So I gave them over to the stubbornness of their hearts to follow their own devices. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I should soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him and their punishment would last forever. But Israel would I feed with the finest wheat and satisfy him with honey from the rock. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. After a long time, the king of Egypt died. 
The Israelites groaned under their slavery and cried out. Out of the slavery, their cry to help rose up to God. God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God looked upon the Israelites, and God took notice of them. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside, God called him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet. For the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry and account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites have now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of our ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus shall you say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. Here ends the reading. Canticle 12, page 88. A Song of Creation. Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, you angels and all powers of the Lord, O heavens and all waters above the heavens sun and moon and stars of the sky. Glorify the Lord, praise him, and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord every shower of rain and fall of dew, all winds and fire and heat, winter and summer. Glorify the Lord, praise him, and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O nights and days, O shining light and enfolding dark, storm clouds and thunderbolts, Glorify the Lord, praise him, and highly exalt him forever. Let the earth glorify the Lord, praise him, and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O mountains and hills, and all that grows upon the earth. Praise him, and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O springs of water, seas and streams, O whales and all that move in the waters, all birds of the air. Glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O beasts of the wild, and all you flocks and herds, O men and women everywhere. Glorify the Lord. 
praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let the people of God glorify the Lord, praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O priests and servants of the Lord, praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O spirits and souls of the righteous, praise him and highly exalt him forever. You that are holy and humble of heart, glorify the Lord, praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let us glorify the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, if I hand over my body so that, that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now, we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these is love. Here ends the reading, Canticle 19, The Song of the Redeemed, page 94. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you've done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages, who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name. For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Apostles' Creed, found on page 96, followed by the traditional Lord's Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A and the prayers that follow. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Mercifully hear our prayers, O Lord, and spare all those who confess their sins to you, that those whose consciences are accused by sin may by your merciful pardon be absolved. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, who after the creation of the world rested from all your works and sanctified a day of rest for all your creatures, grant that we, putting away all earthly anxieties, may be duly prepared for the service of your sanctuary, and that our rest here upon earth may be a preparation for the eternal rest promised to your people in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we turn to the prayers from the Church of the Atonement for this week, beginning on March 10th. We pray for those who are sick or are any or need any special or are in need of any special, especially Jolene, Jeremiah, Melissa, Katie, Charles and Maggie, David, Beth, Susan, Sean, Kate H, Jonathan, Devon, Matthew, Ron B, Judy B, Jerry C, Brad, Mary, Killian, Dennis, former President Carter, Mary, Arun, all with COVID-19, Elizabeth, Jim, Cecilia, Charlie, Edward, Kelly, Anna H, Ann R, Bill, Connie, Larry, Francis Sebastian and Eleanor Francis, both religious, Ken, Deacon, Angel, Thomas, and Greg, priests, Richard, pastor, Michael, bishop. We pray for peace in the Middle East, in Haiti, Ukraine, Russia, Mali, Iran, the Red Sea, and Myanmar. We pray for an end to violence and an end to division in our neighborhood, city, and nation. For all immigrants and those seeking asylum, especially those sheltering in our neighborhood, we pray for those struggling with depression, anxiety, or addiction. And we pray for the work of care for real and care for friends and all whom they serve. We pray for all health care workers. Especially we pray for Joseph Basil, Jackie, Gary, Will, Choi, Erica K., Larry, Kieran, Lee, Carrie, William, Eric, Lisa, Thomas, and Emily. We pray for all families and children in this city and state, for all expectant parents, and for all prisoners. And from Ron Fox, let's see here, it disappeared. Let me find it. Okay. We pray in Thanksgiving for Ron's entrance into BSG on this day 34 years ago. We pray for Paula, our bishop, Charles, our rector, Amanda and Dave, our wardens, 
and for the members of our vestry. We pray for Eric and Rachel as they prepare for baptism. We pray in thanksgiving for the birthdays this week of Nathan Schlack, Scott Keeter, Jack Burke, Angel Schwartz, Brenda Williams, Chad Wilson, Gary Jensen, Cena Lightfold, Charlize Harris, Karen Mather. And thanksgiving for the wedding anniversary of Tom and Janet Elkins. And we pray for the departed. 11-year-old Jaden Perkins, Fred Bernhard, Pastor, Tom Gerrard, Eric Carmen, Lorenzo Abba, Donald Miller, the father, the father of Tim Miller, Robert Iyer, and Steve Lawrence. And at the anniversaries of their deaths, we remember and pray for George Douglas Meyer, Sarah Spiral, Teresa Brower, Don Casey, Robert Williams Priest. And we have a prayer for peace. Lord, it is right and proper that those with hot tempers be cooled. Such is the case with many world leaders whose nations sit at the brink of war. For fear of escalating tensions, we ask that you send your spirit of peace and compassion to facilitate the cooling of hostilities. Let love and forgiveness reign in the hearts of all, that the spirit of hate and strife would find no foothold in all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let's turn to the general thanksgiving found on page 101 of a prayer book. Let's pray together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you've made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that concludes morning prayer this morning. Thank you for joining us here this morning at 8.30 on Google Meet, where we meet every morning at 8.30. It's a bright, sunny day outside, and I think it's supposed to kind of warm up today. And then it's going to be chilly tomorrow. Well, that's the weather report. And no matter where you are, no matter what you find yourself doing, may you experience the grace and peace and calm that comes from God. God bless each of us. <laughs>